Hello everybody, uh, my name is John Matus and I'm from TrainingCenterManager.com. Um, I'd like to show you today our Monitor Defibrillator training system, uh, which you see displayed here. Um, it's basically a tablet computer with our proprietary uh, ECG and Monitor Defibrillator software loaded on it. And it's designed to be used in a classroom uh, for teaching, say, an ACLS, PALS, Paramedic, or other advanced life support course. And by using our product, you're going to be able to replace the clinical monitor defibrillator plus that six to $800 ECG simulation box in your classroom uh, and add the capability to do blood pressure, uh, pulse oximetry, and tidal CO2 detection, uh, temperature, uh, where those features are probably not available to you right now with the more expensive clinical equipment used in a classroom. So uh, I'm next going to show you uh, a quick use of our product, and uh, you'll be able to see it used in a classroom simulation um, of one particular clinical type. Hello folks, uh, this is John again um, with the Monitor Defibrillator application and I'd like to show you today um, what you can do for a pulse arrest slash uh, symptomatic bradycardia type scenario. Um, again, let's say that you have the tablet in your station, uh, the software is loaded as you see here. I'll be using the mouse to simulate the student's finger. Um, the student hits the on-off key, uh, applies the electrodes to the patient, and you decide you're going to give them a lethal ventricular arrhythmia. So by hitting 2, you're going to throw up some ventricular fibrillation. Now the student can respond to this in a couple of ways. They can do a more traditional um, manual charge and shock by adjusting the dose, hitting charge, etc. But if you'd like to incorporate a little bit of AED training into this, they can also just hit the analyze button. And I'll ask you to listen here carefully um, to the audio that's displayed from the product. Okay, I'm going to hit analyze. Analyzing rhythm. Stand clear. Shock advised. Okay, so that's your cue to hit charge. Charging. Stand clear. All right, everyone clear? And the shock is thus delivered. So your next uh, move from the student's perspective would be to begin CPR. We built in a feature that we think is kind of neat, uh, which is compression artifact. So if your students begin um, banging away on the mannequin and you hit backspace, what it does is it obscures the ECG with compression artifact so that the student can't really see the um, rhythm while CPR is going on. And this gives them a good sense of um, interrupting CPR for rhythm analysis when appropriate. Um, you could put in your presser at this point, or the students could. Um, they can maybe intubate the patient if that seems appropriate. Um, you can also throw up uh, an appropriate CO2 detection. So let's say they've tubed them and they've put the capnograph on the patient. Uh, you can give them a low CO2, suggesting poor CPR. And when you see compressions that you like, you can increase the CO2. Uh, it's maybe a little too much. But you can increase the CO2 to a level that is more consistent with good CPR to see if the students understand what um, what's going on and, and if the patient's um, perfusion has improved from the chest compressions. Let's say your two minutes of CPR are up, they've stopped CPR, you decide to give them their rhythm back, which again is still VFib in our case, so we're going to go ahead and charge. Charging. Stand clear. And when you hit your 200 joules, again, you, students can clear the patient, the student leaners to the tablet can press the shock button, and then CPR can be resumed again, uh, where they would go ahead and introduce uh, their presser and types of therapies. So we're now in our second um, period of CPR. Let's say they've given their antiarrhythmic, perhaps an amiodarone. Um, the trick here is to see if the student really understands the use of capnography. So if you want to be subtle about it, what you could do as your next move would be to give them something like this, but tell them nothing to see if they understand that um, increase in CO2 is consistent with a return of spontaneous circulation. Um, one of the most pleasant surprises when you're training a group that's never used CO2 detection before is when you give them uh, an increase in CO2 that is abrupt like that and the light bulb goes off and the student immediately stops CPR. Uh, you can hit the number one key uh, to reveal that as the underlying rhythm below the chest compressions. Okay. Um, so this student has recovered, uh, he's doing much better, you've decided you're going to give them some reward for that, so let's say they put the pulse oximetry on the patient, um, you've decided you're going to give them like a semi-reasonable um, uh, pulse ox, uh, let's say they, you know, they ventilate the patient with a little 100% oxygen, and you decide you want to go a little higher, you can do that. You can also program a um, blood pressure, so let's say that I hit R on the keyboard to program a blood pressure, 
the student will have to hit NIBP. Again, blood pressure is not a real-time vital sign. They have to uh, take it on the spot and get a snapshot. So here's a relatively hypotensive patient for an adult. Um, let's say they start, you know, infusing some fluid, giving the patient a fluid challenge. Um, maybe they've given a couple. You've decided you want them to give a visa. Uh, active type drug, um, they can certainly do that. And what you could do, of course, is just program a decent pressure in there. So I've just hit T on the keyboard. So you could prompt the student and say, okay, your infusion is done. The student would hit on IVP to reassess the patient to see if there is a change. Um, and you could give them that blood pressure as your next pressure, which would be kind of a nice reward. We even built in um, some hypothermia, which is kind of nice. I just hit F6 on the keyboard to program a normal thermic patient. So when the student hits temp, it will return both Fahrenheit and centigrade. Um, and the student could say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm now going to begin some uh, cold saline infusion. I'll put some ice packs, you know, uh, in the axilla and behind the neck, and uh, I'm going to hook them up to our Arctic Sun machine. Um, you could program the next value, and you could say something like, okay, you've done all of those interventions. Uh, would you like to reassess? And if they hit temp another time, uh, it'll go ahead and give them a temperature that is more within the realm of protective hypothermia. So um, we've programmed them on DefAB so you can do all of those little simulations and we think they're, they're quite a bit of fun to use in the classroom. Um, I'm going to turn it off and back on to simulate another patient. Let's say this time you've given them a conscious patient. Um, he has some pulmonary congestion, some rails, uh, he's weak, he's dizzy, etc. Uh, when they put him on the monitor, um, he comes back with something like that. Okay, third degree heart block. Um, you can give them some accompanying vital signs, make it a little ominous, a little some hypotension. Again, the student would hit an IVP and get something like that. Okay, so let's say they've elected to pace this patient. Um, the product will do all of the normal pacing stuff, so if you hit power, you'll see the pacer spikes. And they need to increase the outputs in milliamps. You'll notice here the output milliamps and here the rate. So as I go up, once I hit the threshold, and the thresholds are programmable using the function keys. There's three or four of them. Some of them converted 40, some of them converted the default to 50, and you can make it as high as 80 for a patient with lots of impedance, uh, perhaps someone a little bit heavier. And now you see capture on the monitor. So once again, you can do all of these simulations without really having to have a monitor defibrillator or one of those expensive $1,800 uh, simulator boxes. Um, your software does all of the work for you, and it's very, very wide, broad platform that you can do a number of simulations with. Uh, once again, you can give them a repeat pressure by hitting Y, uh, and the next time the student hits an IVP now after pacing, they'll get a blood pressure that is a little more life-sustaining. <laughs> um, so again, just some examples of what you can do using our monitor defibrillator application. We hope that this is useful to you in teaching your ACLS pals, uh, paramedic, or other acute care slash resuscitation courses. Um, please have a look at all of the stuff we offer at trainingcentermanager.com, and you'll be pretty excited to see some of the low-cost solutions that we've made uh, for trainers like yourself. Thanks.